What's up everybody? I'm gonna do something for you today that's absolutely amazing. I'm actually gonna show you how you can go from real estate agent stuck grinding deal after deal to getting your first investment property and then scaling your portfolio over seven figures into the multiple seven figures, which is ultimately gonna build wealth and residual income from your rental properties. And I'm gonna show you how to do this just like I did. So in this video, I'm gonna pull back the curtains and show you exactly what you need to do to get your first investment property in the next six months without having to worry about those high interest rates right now and without worrying about not being able to find a deal in your chosen market because we're gonna show you how. I'm also gonna show you how to structure your business so you have huge tax benefits and protect your assets and how to structure your team in your retail real estate business so you can get your time back. And then lastly, the team and systems that you're gonna need as an investor, how to find, fund, acquire, and then finally monetize those deals into profits. And just so we don't waste any time, this video is only for realtors that are successful in their retail business and they're coachable, they're willing to challenge their limiting beliefs, they're gonna show up and they're gonna be action takers. So if you're not a successful agent that's coachable and willing to put in the work, if that's not you, go ahead and just click off of this video right now and then go watch some of my other content on YouTube and learn some more before you come back to this video. Now you've most likely already done a real estate deal and maybe lost some money, or you couldn't figure out how to fund and finance that deal properly, so you just ended up to the default, which is taking the commission on the deal. That is totally okay. Most of the people that watch my content, including myself, went through the exact same thing. The reason why a lot of agents get burnt on their first deal is that because they enter into this without the proper mindset to take the deal on. Additionally, they don't have enough capital to complete the deal without putting themselves in financial stress. Whenever you're making a financial decision out of stress, it definitely will negatively impact the outcome of the deal. They might have also had a partner that was a contractor or someone else that added complexity and dragged the situation down. I've heard story after story about agents that have made this mistake. We operate differently and make sure that you have that sound foundation to go into an investment deal because we teach you how to underwrite the deal correctly and ensure that you have adequate funding so you don't end up in a stressful situation like we talked about previously. Also, you've gotta be sure that you have multiple exit strategies for each property that you acquire, and you set proper expectations for capital partners if you end up raising money for these deals. You're probably thinking that it's impossible to get that first investment property and then scale that portfolio into the seven figures and multiple seven figures, or you think the deals are too hard to find in your chosen market. And to be honest, most people have that limiting belief when they get started, including myself. So before we dive into the valuable information, I wanna actually show you that you can get that first investment property and then scale to multiple seven figures without having to worry about how you're gonna fund that deal or find the right property. My personal journey started in real estate investing in 2017. I was an agent just grinding deal after deal, missing important moments in my son's life and making my wife upset because I was working too much and just wasn't home. So I ended up shutting down my real estate team and then purchasing a couple of triplex properties in Phoenix at the end of 2017. That led me to continue to do more fix and flips and ultimately the profit from those fix and flips and then my realtor business being systematized. This actually bled over to me owning 26 different properties in three different states with a six figure net profit cash flow that just takes that pressure off of me in the day in and day out duties of being a dad, a husband, and also an entrepreneur running multiple businesses. And this doesn't only just work for me. One of my first students, his name's Al, he's a top performing realtor in South Florida. After just a week in the program with me, after going through all of our online training, he was able to acquire a property in Central Florida that ended up producing great cash flow for him for a year, and then he ended up selling it at a massive profit. And another student, Steve, here in Phoenix, actually wanted to start flipping houses. Over his first three transactions, he ended up netting multiple six figures here in the Phoenix market, and then that led him to starting a business building custom homes. And most recently, in the last 30 days, Robert came into the program feeling depressed and down about his retail business, as many real estate agents are right now with how the market is, and we actually got him going. He signed over a million dollars worth of real estate under contract just by simply changing his mindset. And that was on his agency side of things. And on the investment side of things, we gave him the courage and the tools to get out there. He's got a list of 25 off-market sellers and he's actively working on acquiring more properties right now to build his rental portfolio. All right, everybody, now we're gonna jump into these four foundational pillars that you need to put into place in order to get this going in your life and your business. All right, you guys, so why don't we just go ahead and jump right in here? So the agent to investor framework starts with mindset. 
Now, obviously, when you're building this mindset, you've got to do things to record or to reprogram your subconscious mind. Now, I started by doing affirmations. These are statements that are statements of what is actually current. Your subconscious mind does not understand the difference between something that you want to do in your life and something that is current reality. So you need to speak these declarations as if they are currently reality. For example, my rental portfolio pays me $10,000 in cash flow every single month. So you record these affirmations, record yourself doing affirmations. I like to put some Baroque classical music behind them. That helps your mind to be flowing and this to deeply ingrain into your subconscious mind. The next thing is the smart day and the smart week. The smart day and the smart week is a process with which you are systematically getting your thoughts organized and tying them to outcomes that you're looking to generate in your life. Now, this is a daily practice on the smart day. This is a 15 to 30 minute meeting that you have with yourself. I call it a CEO meeting. And the smart week is more of like a 90 to two, 90 minutes to two hour meeting that you're doing with yourself on a weekly basis. Where am I at with my KPIs? Where am I at with my goals? Am I on track? And then how do I close the gap? Happy to send you guys those trainings separately. Just go ahead and DM me on Instagram and I'll send them to you. The next thing is that I was always filling my mind with good books. And some of these foundational books are Think and Grow Rich. I've talked about these a lot in the past, but these are super important books that you need to be reading on a consistent basis. I go back and revisit Think and Grow Rich at least once a year. Another book is called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Your money blueprint has a lot to do with subconsciously how you manage your money. And if you don't tell your money what to do, if it only has one destination, which is your bank account, it'll end up just leaving your bank account and going wherever. If you have specific destinations for it, you're gonna end up doing much, much better. So the next thing with mindset, you've gotta understand this process of manifestation. Now, your current thoughts or your programming, and those are your subconscious belief systems, are going to lead to your feelings and your emotions. Now, your feelings and your emotions lead to your actions. If you're confident, you're taking massive action, you're doing all these things. And you've probably seen this in your realtor business before. This is ultimately gonna lead to your results, and the results are gonna go back and lead to more thoughts and programming. So again, you fortify this mindset by affirmations, understanding what the outcomes are that you're looking to generate on a consistent basis, using the smart day and the smart week, reading good books, putting good information into your mind. You do this on a consistent basis, and that's exactly what you need to do in order to build this mindset consistently. Once you've got this mindset built, then we move into how you structure your business. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can structure your business as an agent and an investor. Now, first and foremost, you've got to focus on a cash generation strategy, your portfolio strategy. There's two things that you need to understand about how an investor and a business owner operate. They have systems and they have assets. A system is a business that generates active cash income. Now that could be your real estate sales business or it could be a fix and flip or a, whole, a wholesale business. The key is it's active activity that is producing that income. And so for you as a real estate agent, you've got to decide, hey, I really love being a realtor and I have a great team and I've got a system. It's working really well. It's super profitable. I'm just going to do that really, really well, be really, really profitable, and then channel my money into investments and start building wealth. Or I'm going to say, hey, I don't like grinding as many deals as I used to. I'm just going to take the 20 to 30 deals that come from my database every single year, and then I'm going to get some leverage on those, exchange a portion of my commission dollars, and then I'm going to go out and go ahead and start putting into place the, these dollars that I'm earning at a high level on my realtor side and on the fix and flip side into long-term assets that are going to start building wealth. The next thing you got to put into place is out of that Secrets of the Millionaire Mind book, a wealth management, a money management system. This system is actually going to teach you where you put your money when you get a paycheck. You get a paycheck today for $10,000. You've got to put that paycheck in a bunch of different accounts so that you have money for education, tax bill, financial freedom, which is your investment account, furthering your education, long-term savings for spending, and of course, your necessities, your overhead, your business expenses. What that's going to do is teach you that $10,000 a month actually isn't that much money, and that will set your thermometer a lot higher helping you to understand that you need to make more money than just 10 grand a month. From there, we put into place an accounting system using QuickBooks, have a virtual assistant that's a bookkeeper that's gonna be keeping track of all these transactions. When you're buying and selling a lot of properties, if you have a fix and flip business, or if you have a rental portfolio, you need to be tracking your expenses on a P&L. 
If you're going to get financing on these properties or you want to qualify for financing personally on a Fannie Mae Freddie Mac type of conventional financing, you need to be able to demonstrate to the bank that your business is profitable. And when you have financial statements, that makes it so much easier. Additionally, if you are fixing and flipping properties, you've got to have accounting and bookkeeping in place. If you don't have that in place, you're going to end up in a mess. You're not going to know how much money you spent on the deal. You're going to have money between your personal and your business. It'll just be a disaster. The next part of your business structure is your tax-free wealth plan. Now, this includes how you're going to structure your LLC. I typically structure mine as an S corporation, which allows me to do what's called a salary dividend split. We take a portion of that income, that net profit is your W-2 salary, and the other portion is your dividends. Talk to your CPA when you're getting that set up, and there are rules that apply to S corps, so make sure you're in compliance with that. Once you have that in place, you've got asset protection. Now, asset protection is super important because if you go out and make all this money, someone can sue you and go after the assets that you own. So you don't want to own too many assets in each LLC. My rule of thumb is no more than 250K of net asset value per LLC. If there's more than that, I'll just create a different LLC. And that way, if structured correctly with an operating agreement and having an attorney review everything for you, you'll be able to protect your assets and then layer everything so that each individual property is their own entity and no one can go after you personally or go after your other assets in the event of a lawsuit. So once we have this business structure in place, then we go in and talk about systems and team. The first step of this is getting your realtor business stabilized. So to get the business stabilized for me, I actually was in a position where I hated running a team. You might have a team that you love running and it's not taking up too much of your life. But if, if you're like me and you didn't like running a team and you had too much expenses, not enough net profit, you should consider actually joining another team. And that's exactly what I did. I shut my team down and then I joined another team that had a bunch of leverage pieces in place. For example, listing manager, transaction coordinator, and then other agents on the team that were showing agents. Now, if you just want to stay as a solo agent, that's totally fine. Make sure that you're leveraging a transaction coordinator and a showing agent so that you're not wasting time driving around showing houses. Now, the key here is to trade low dollar per hour activity for high dollar per hour activity. So when you have these leverage pieces out working for you, you're going to get a lot of your time back. And you're also going to exchange some commission dollars for that. The key here is you're trading low dollar per hour activity for high dollar per hour activity. Now, you're going to be paying a split for this and you're going to be maybe earning a little bit less commission, but you're going to have a lot of your time back. So with this extra time, it's key that you focus on generating new business opportunities, both on the realtor side and on the investment side. Some systems that you need to put into place are consistent lead generation methods of nurturing the past client database. So what I did is I used a company called Viral Marketing. Y'all have probably heard of it. Basically, it's a video blog, email type of situation. You're sending videos out to your database twice a month. Also, plain text lead generation emails, and then you get a lead report of who's looking at these videos, who's clicking on search for a home or home value, and you're able to systematically follow up. This actually eliminates the need for constant telephone prospecting. A lot of times these days, people don't want to be called. Just text them, send them an email, follow up with them, make it friendly, make it authentic. Now, this consistently led me to 20 to 30 deals a year as a realtor, and I look at this income as my base salary. Now, the next step is your systems and your team on the investment side of the business. Now, honestly, as a real estate agent, you're out there referring contractors all the time. Every time one of your buyers is purchasing a property, you're referring a roofer, a plumber, an electrician, a painter, a landscaper. All of these different trades are involved in your active real estate practice. So what I actually did is go out to these contractors that I was already referring and tell them, hey, I'm going to be purchasing properties and you know I'm looking to build my team, et cetera. And that way you're able to get people you know and you trust already that have a vested interest in you because you're already handing them business and add those con contractors to your team so that you can quickly and effectively get work done on a property when you acquire it. Now, unless you're already a property manager yourself, you're probably going to meet property managers in passing as you're actively in real estate sales. I also met some solid property managers in the Phoenix area here, and I put those property managers in place on my rental properties so that I wasn't spending all my time chasing tenants for rent, spending my time leasing properties, etc. You find someone that's talented, that has your standards in mind, and then you put them in place so that you can, again, continue to leverage your time. And the, the 7 to 10% or whatever percentage point you're paying your property manager is well worth it because you might end up paying 
I don't know, 150 bucks a month to manage one property, but that $150 a month could actually save you several hours per month, depending on if you have a needy tenant or a situation going on that's less than desirable. I'm also always talking to local hard money lenders, exploring what loan program and options they have available, and making sure that I'm up to date on their current fees and rates. That way, when you find a deal, you have the funding options already lined up to be able to take these things down. There are some lenders that will fund 100%. Typically, they have higher fees and higher interest rates, but if you buy the property right, it can still work. And then the last thing is a skip tracing software. Now, inevitably, as a real estate agent and an investor, you're going to be driving around, whether you're showing homes or you're checking on your properties that you're either rehabbing for flip or for rental, you're gonna run across other properties that are ugly and distressed looking. Now, what I did is put those properties into a skip tracing software. You can use Deal Machine, PropStream, Batch Leads. They're all pretty much the same. Some of them are better than others, but basically you can build a database of distressed looking properties, and then you are all of a sudden building a database of sellers that might have a distressed situation that need to sell cash to an investor. Could be a property that's inherited, could be a death in the family, et cetera. So now that you've got your systems and team set up, it's really time to get out there and start buying deals. So the first thing that I did was I went out there and I found every investor and wholesaler that I could find and I worked on adding value to their business in any way that I possibly could. In the beginning, I was actually working as a real estate agent for other investors, trying to understand what they were looking for in their deals, how they were managing their contractors, et cetera. I also went to Real Estate Investor Association meetups, so you should do the same. When you go to these meetups, do the best you can to be authentic, network the right way, provide value and get their contact information and then follow up, build a database of these guys. Let them know that you're an agent and you're not just some investor that went to some seminar that all of a sudden is you know, trying to buy properties. You're actually a legitimate real estate professional. You know how the transaction works and you're gonna be easy to work with. And then when they send you deals, if they're a good deal, commit to the deal and buy the deal. That's what I did on a consistent basis. Now you might be thinking to yourself, gosh, wholesalers, they're not that good of deals. They're sending out so many deals. They're not that good. There's a lot of deals that get done by wholesalers before they ever hit the email blast. So don't let that limiting belief hold you back. It's definitely a good way to acquire properties. Now, just like I talked to previously, driving for dollars, using that deal machine or batch leads app, you're gonna be driving for dollars and adding these, these distressed properties to your database of potential sellers and potential deals. Now, oftentimes you'll come across these and the people aren't gonna be motivated, they're not gonna be distressed. And so these could actually translate over to active revenue out of your realtor business. You could say, hey, I can provide you a cash offer for your property, and I can also just list your property for sale as a real estate professional, helping you to get max value as long as you're willing to correct these things and make it retail market ready. You have multiple tools in your belt as a real estate agent, and this is why it's valuable to be a real estate investor. The other thing that I did consistently was talking to other real estate agents that are commission focused. They want to just close a lot of deals. They don't have this investor mindset. And so you can let them know, hey, you come across an ugly looking house. I'm your guy. Call me first. I'll make sure you get both ends of the commission and then be reliable, be respectful, help these agents make money in their business and help them accomplish their goals while at the same time, you're able to accomplish your goals. Then you've got to analyze these deals correctly. Now, analyzing these deals correctly is super, super important because you always make your money on the acquisition. You need to use a spreadsheet, some type of pro forma, where you're tracking all of your expenses on the acquisition side of the property, the closing costs, hard money fees, all of your rehab costs, all of your holding costs over the time that you own the property, your interest and points, all that stuff, and then your resale cost if you're flipping it or your refinance cost if you're gonna refi it and hold it as a rental. The other thing is if you're just buying properties that are completely rehabbed, there's also different spreadsheets and calculators that I've used to analyze the rental performance of a particular asset, buying it at specified price. Either way, make sure you're analyzing these deals correctly with a pro forma spreadsheet. Now, as a real estate professional, negotiating deals is actually your specialty because this is what you do day in and day out as a real estate agent. You're talking to buyers and sellers all the time and this comes natural to you. Now, there's a couple of things that I always recommend keeping in mind is that you, number one, always have to have a fiduciary in mind because you are licensed. So you've gotta do what's right for the seller and that's what we should always be doing anyways. But most of the time when you find yourself in these situations that people need to do a cash sale, 
they don't really have many other options. They don't have enough money to fix up the property or they have other outside motivating factors that are gonna lead them to this conclusion. Now they can either sell to the We Buy Ugly Houses guy on the billboard or they can sell to you. And because you're a real estate professional and you're gonna take those things properly through that course of negotiation and conversation, you will be effectively able to go ahead and get those deals under contract and then you know that process. It'd be very easy to go from that contract to close, provided you have all these other systems and teams in place, hard money financing, et cetera. Which leads into how I funded a lot of my deals. Now at the beginning, I got my dad to loan me some money, which obviously is helpful. Some of you may not have that option, but you can go out there and get 100% financing through hard money lenders. And also, if you're managing your money well as a real estate agent, you should have some savings built up over time that you have available to tap into in the event that you find a deal. Now, if you find yourself thinking, wow, that's probably not gonna work, there's no lenders in my market that do 100% financing or it's just gonna be too hard, you may find yourself gravitating toward one particular client that you've done multiple transactions with. And most of the realtors I talk to, they have this common theme in their business. They have a couple of clients that end up doing a lot of transactions and they can go back to that client and over time, you build a lot of trust. Typically, people that are doing multiple transactions are highly financially successful. What I ended up doing is talking about my real estate investment business with people that I knew could financially invest with me. This is a hot topic now in today's world, and most people are very interested in investing in a real estate deal, especially with someone like you that they've done multiple transactions with and they already have a high level of trust. This is one of the best ways for you to fund deals as an agent. So now that we've got funding in mind, now we can talk about our exit strategy. Now there's really only two exit strategies, it's sell and hold. Now there's multiple variations of those. On the sell side, you can do a full retail HGTV fix and flip where you're remodeling the property, new bathrooms, new kitchen, new flooring, new paint, new landscaping, making it totally picture perfect for a retail buyer. Or you can go ahead and do what's called a hotel where you're putting that property on the market with little to no work done to it just because you got a deep buy on it and you're able to capture a pretty decent profit margin without doing heavy, heavy rehab. Heavy rehab can be overwhelming, so be careful with that. I've done both the wholesale side and the, the retail fix and flip side. They are both lucrative. You just have to decide what strategy is best for you. The wholesale deals are a little bit more difficult to find because most of the time in markets today, you've gotta be adding massive value to create a big margin. Now, when you're going to hold a property, you've got multiple options as well. You can do what's called a Burr strategy deal where you're buying the property, renovating it, renting it out, refinancing it, recapturing some of your capital out of that deal, if not all of it, if you get a deep enough buy, and then you move that money onto your next deal. You can also just buy a property where you're putting 20% down, financing that deal through a regular lender, and now you have options to choose from on the rental strategy. You can do short-term rental, which is like Airbnb, VRBO, which by the way, if unless you're in a niche market, I wouldn't recommend getting into short-term rentals right now with a looming recession and other regulations and restrictions coming up in a lot of big cities. It's probably not gonna be a strategy that's gonna be super lucrative going forward. Obviously, there are those outlier properties if you wanna get into short-term rentals. What you need to do is go over the top on design and amenities and be in that one to $2 million price point in your local market so that you're on the high end. The high end of Airbnb will continue to do well, but my opinion is that the regular property is probably not gonna do well. So take that for what you will. The other strategy is a midterm rental. Now these are partially furnished, travel nurses, things like that. You typically can get more than your average monthly rent on a long-term rental, and it's a way for you to get the cash flow to be a little bit higher on these properties without having as much hands-on or market volatility as a short-term rental. Then you have obviously the long-term 12-month rental. And then one of the best things that I've done to increase cash flow is using a platform called PadSplit. Now PadSplit is an app and a platform that allows you to do home sharing between roommates. And you can actually rent out the individual room to individual tenants in an investment property. These pad splits average making two to three times more on monthly rental revenue, and they end up cash flowing at least double of what a standard rental would. As affordability problems increase in all of our major cities, that's a strategy to look into, and I have been doing this for five years in Phoenix, and it works phenomenally well. So knowing your exit strategy in a nutshell, this is what you do to monetize the deal. Whether you're gonna flip it, cash out, you're gonna hotel it, cash out, you're gonna hold it long range with any of those rental strategies, you're getting cash out of the deal. 
this is where you have multiple options because sometimes you buy a property with the intention to flip, but you need to have the backup strategy of holding that property. So you can use any one of those options to hold the property to move forward. All right, guys, I know we covered a lot right now, so let's just review what we've covered. We talked about mindset. Building this mindset is absolutely paramount because you don't have your mind right, you're not gonna be able to do anything correctly. Just like Henry Ford says, whether you think you can or you think you can't, either way, you're right. If you get this mindset correct, you're going to be able to make that transition from agent just stuck grinding deals, getting into that first investment property, and then ultimately building huge amounts of wealth into a multiple seven-figure portfolio. The next thing that we covered was your business structure. Now you've got to get your business structured correctly because it's going to give you a clear picture of exactly what to focus on in the short term for your active businesses, both realtor and flipping, and then it's going to lead you to becoming a long-term investor. It's also going to give you the systems and tools that you need to help you save money on your taxes, protect your assets, manage your money well, and be lucky. And what I mean by being lucky is being prepared when an opportunity arrives. Now, obviously, we talked about systems and team. Now, you've got to get your team and your systems in place. This is going to put you into a position where you can spend more time starting and expanding your investment portfolio well into the seven figures. And then lastly, we just covered this, buying deals. You need to put all these components together in order to be able to source the deals, buy the deals at the correct price, have the adequate funding. This puts you up to the plate with getting that first property, and then it becomes a repeatable process to expand this portfolio. So when you put these four things together, the mindset, the business structure, the systems in the team, and the deal acquisition properly, you're gonna be able to move forward with confidence. Imagine what your life would look like if you're able to systematically duplicate these results in your life over and over and over again. Now again, this leads back to having systems and assets. That is one thing that the wealthy people do extraordinarily well. They have systems that generate cash and they have assets that produce cash on a consistent basis. And this is how you go from agent to investor. All right, everybody, we just went over a lot and it may seem slightly overwhelming, but I can tell you that is a simple step-by-step -step system and it can be put into place for any real estate agent out there. You just have to follow the steps. So now you have all those tools to do it. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna talk to you guys about something that I'm super excited about. And this is the agent to investor program. This is helping real estate agents get out of that transactional grind, get their first property, scale to multiple seven figures like we've been talking about this entire time. So the cool part about agent to investor unlike some other coaching programs, it's not just a video training where it's a do it yourself, you do everything on your own and then you just have to figure it out. If that was the case, you probably would just do it on YouTube by yourself. And it's also not a done for you where we just go ahead and do everything on your behalf. We're right here in the middle as a done with you program. And here's how we get people into the program. When someone opts in, we actually schedule a one hour onboarding call to get you guys set up and get your business plan clearly established. If you have a clear business plan, it's much easier to put that mindset in place and then put these other pillars into place and get into action on acquiring properties. Now this one hour call is super valuable. You get a recording of it and you can go back to it and then we can hold you accountable to the things that you say that you want to accomplish. There is also an online training system. This is for foundational topics and concepts for you to run through and have this awareness of what you need to be doing and how you need to be doing it. And then we come to our group calls every single week where we dive deep, we have Q and A, we underwrite deals, and we share what's going on day in and day out in our struggles and our challenges of acquiring properties, and we lift each other up. The power of the community and the power of the mastermind is something that's huge and impactful. These are actually much more impactful than individual one-on-one -on -one coaching calls because you get to share the journey with other agents that are making the jump from agent to investor, and you get to see where they're at, and sometimes they're currently a little bit ahead of where you may be, and they can share exactly and speak exactly to you where you're at and help you to overcome some of those roadblocks or stumbling blocks that you're currently experiencing. We underwrite deals, and then we run through each one of these pillars in very great detail so that you fully understand all of the things that you need to put in place in your business to get these things going. The other component of the community is access to each other through Discord. And now all of the members have access to our Discord server. This is a place where everyone's sharing information, sharing wins, 
talking about how's, how they're raising money and sharing wins about how their realtor business is succeeding as well as their investment business. It gives you the opportunity to interact with each other. You can take ahas from each other and have access to each other at all times. Some of the members are doing script practice with each other and they're really, really collaborating and forming something that's awesome. So in addition to this, members can actually just DM me directly through Discord and send me voice notes, challenges, whatever obstacles that they're facing, and I'm gonna direct one-on-one -on -one coach you through that so that you can overcome these little things, and then we bring those challenges to our group calls if it's something that's more in-depth and all the members can benefit from. So if this is speaking to you and this is valuable and you're that real estate agent that is wanting to get that first investment property within the next six months and then learn how to scale your portfolio to multiple seven figures, go ahead and click the link down below here so that you can book in a call with us and we can talk about where you're at currently and where you wanna get to and then together see if we can identify some roadblocks and then if I think I can help you, we can talk about what that looks like. Again, this is only for agents that are already successful in their retail business, that are coachable, willing to put in the work, show up, participate, take action in faith, and challenge their limiting beliefs. So where do we go from here? There's really two options for you. You can take all the information that I just gave you and you can go out there and just go ahead and implement it in your business and in your life. You can go take the time and the years it took me to put those systems in place and you can do it yourself. You have all the information that you need to do it. Or option two, we can actually hop on a call and we can talk about how we can compress time for you. We can save you all those learning lessons and only implement the systems and things that actually work in this business so you can get that first property and then scale your portfolio over seven figures. So if that sounds like you and you're 100% certain that you wanna take option two, go ahead and click the link below and book a call with me. There's a handful of questions in the form. Make sure to fill those out so I know exactly where you're at right now and I can give you the right advice. Getting that first property and then getting to that seven figure portfolio is a lonely journey and it's hard. But what if I could help you get out of that transactional grind, get that first property with confidence, learning how to fund it properly and structure your businesses? What would that do for you? It would absolutely change everything. It would give you more time freedom, more financial freedom, and ultimately a more fulfilled life and that's just the minimum that we're gonna do. This mindset that we're gonna help you build and these systems and these structures for your businesses that we're gonna put in place for you, they're gonna protect all your assets, they're gonna help you save tons of money on taxes, and you're gonna be more systematized and structured moving forward in your real estate business. So if that's you, if you're the agent that's sitting there thinking, Kevin, I've seen enough of your content, I'm ready to have a conversation with you. If you're motivated, you're willing to challenge those limiting beliefs. If you're someone who's persistent, who wants to work hard, take action in faith and change their life, go ahead and click the link below and book a call with me. But if you're someone that isn't ready, you're someone that has limiting beliefs, you're someone that isn't willing to challenge those limiting beliefs, don't waste my time and don't waste your time by booking a call. Go ahead, watch more of my videos, scroll around the internet, try to figure it out on your own, but don't waste the time. If it's you, if you're an action taker and you wanna make this happen and you wanna make it a reality in your life, Book the call today and take the first step in changing your life. The worst case scenario on this call, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna leave the call with a ton of free value and even more clarity on where you're headed in your life and your business right now than before. So if that's you, if you're ready to scale, if you're ready to make this happen in your life and in your business, go ahead and click the link below and book the call and we'll see you there.